Hello, Helen. Who are you and where are we? <laughs> My name is Helen Giles and I'm the curator here at the Norris Museum in St Ives. That's fantastic. And what sort of things do you do here in the museum? Uh, well, it's very much a local history museum. We've been going for the last 80 years. Um, the collections are quite diverse. They range from dinosaurs and fossils right the way up to uh, modern items such as a calculator that was designed locally in the factory just down the road. Fantastic. And you're in a, a lovely old building and I noticed the two figures by the side of the door. Can you just introduce them to me please? <laughs> yes. Um, we've named them Bob after Hold on. the Sorry. previous curator Bob Byrne Murdoch who was curator here for 32 years. He's recently retired and uh, is a well-known person in St Ives. And the other one is Herbert after Herbert Norris who uh, was the person who left this amazing collection to the, to the people of St Ives and wider Huntingdonshire area. The museum itself covers everything relating to the county of what was Huntingdonshire, which is now absorbed by Cambridgeshire. Well, when I dropped by, the thing that caught my interest was obviously the mammoth hair. Can yeah. you tell us a bit more about the provenance? Yes, I can. Um, from our collections database, it was found in the museum attic with a piece of paper saying that it was taken from a, um, the remains of a, a more or less complete mammoth from um, Siberia. So that's, that's all we know. We don't know when it was given to the museum and we don't know who by. A bit of a mystery. Um, but it has been on display for a number of years. But I think a lot of people pass it by because it's not really, it's not terribly, um, it's not highlighted very well in the museum, mm. which is probably going to change now. <laughs> Well, it caught my interest because of my interest in photographing animal hairs. Yes. Um, and you were then actually quite open to the idea of people coming in to assist in finding out more about some of the samples and the specimens you have here. Yes. Um, what's, there's only about 10% of what we've actually got on display and we're very keen to have people come and access the rest of the collections and to research them and find out more about them because anything they find out and anything they can give us is, is a benefit to how we can display it in the future for future mm. generations. Yeah, and I, I certainly found it was quite interesting. There were a number of people coming in, either researching information or looking for information, as well as just looking around. Yes, it's, it's much more than just a museum of static displays. It's very much a community venue where people can come in and, and buy, buy things. They can ask tourist information. We get lots of requests about where's this, how do I find this, so we're, we're more than just a static display really, so much more. Great, well we'll go on to the next part of the video which is looking at a study of the mammoth hair and the beautiful pictures that come of it, but thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. You're very welcome. It's been great, thank you. And here is the mammoth hair sample from the Norris Museum. Looking at it now, closer up, you can see that there are fine filaments and some very thick ones which are guard hairs. These can extend to over a metre long in mammoths. We're going to look at a guard hair in air to see if there are any surface scales visible as you see on many hairs. And even at a hundred times magnification as here, you don't actually see scales you might expect. If we do the same with fine hairs, and a high magnification, look at the top hair coming down. There is a hint of scaling there, which is much more normal. Mounting the sample in Canada Balsam, you can look inside the hair here at 40 times magnification, then at 100 times magnification, and then at 400 times magnification. But there's not really much to see, apart from surface patterning, but no scales as we might have expected. However, if we use polarised light and focus up and down in the hair, you can see that there is the hint of a faint central band, which could be the medulla or the core of the hair, which can be hollow in many species, but obviously not here. Now looking at the fine hairs in Canada balsam at 40 times magnification, at 100 times magnification, and immediately you can see that some of the hairs do actually seem to have a line passing through them. And when we go up to 400 times magnification and focus up and down, you can gradually see that at least one of the hairs seems to have air bubbles in the middle where the medulla would be. Now this 
could be adaptive, or it could just be a response to storage over 44,000 years. Viewing these samples in crossed polars gives a beautiful set of patterns, but doesn't really tell us much more about the sample. In summary, the sample is consistent with mammoth hair, having coarse guard hairs and fine hairs. We can't see much structure on the guard hairs, but there does seem to be some structure in some of the fine hairs. <laughs>